Oh, oh, thank you so much, sir. It's a pleasure. And welcome back to another episode of Anderton's TV. And Matt is back, Matt from Monty's, uh, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Monty himself. Uh, and today we're going to geek out a bit about a new set of pickups that you have uh, yeah. designed. Um, as the intro piece of music would suggest, a <laughs> oh uh, little Peter Green inspired set. Um, Matt, if you don't know, uh, has been servicing guitars and making guitar things uh, all his life, probably Pretty maybe much. not all his life, but all his adult <laughs> life. Um, you've serviced and made pickups for some fairly big A-listers, haven't you? Yeah, come on, we'll get, the, we'll get the we'll get the 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 that pedal show. <laughs> yeah, the honker, the honker but yeah, out. But yeah. who, who have you who have you des who have you worked with in terms of designing stuff um, or servicing guitars? I've worked for Pete Townsend, Mark Knopfler, Ed O'Brien. Done some stuff for Ed Sheeran. Um, quite a lot of other people. Um, you know. It's all come from the repair side of things. So, you know, building people's confidence in me to let them do guitar work, and then they trust me with, you know, altering their tone. It's been been good. Oh well, that's cool. <laughs> so look, when I first met Matt, uh, you you were running a sort of a a, a full service kind of um, repair shop in yep. London for guitars. Over the last sort of two or three years, you've moved uh, more into just making aftermarket uh, guitar products. So, you, you you may know. I mean. We must have sold a thousand of these now. We do the the, the Montespresso uh, relic, relic wax. wax. Um, Pete had a set of pickups, the DP fifty one Telecaster mm -hmm. set uh, that he designed with Matt, um, and you got a whole range of other guitar, you know, wiring looms, pots, other pickups, yeah, yeah, all yeah. kinds of stuff. All that stuff. Uh, which some of which you can buy from Andertons, and all of which you can buy from uh, the Montes yep. <laughs> website. But today. I think we're going to talk about, I say I think, I know. Uh, we're going to talk about one of the most iconic uh, guitar sounds of all time. Yeah. The happy accident, as mm -hmm. mythology says, of how um, Peter Green uh, got his sort of distinctive guitar tone. Uh, and we've got a host of guitars here that haven't got uh, that, that have got the stock pickups in from yeah. Epiphones through to Pete's custom shop Les Paul, and we've got the one uh, Les Paul standard here, the, the the USA 50s Les Paul standard, which has got the the new. Uh, we're calling them the, or oh, I say we, you're calling them the Bethnal, Bethnal Green, Green, which yeah. I'm sure you'll tell us about yeah, why swear as well. <laughs> okay, so um, describe. Let's go back in 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 time then. What is your understanding of how? Peter Green ended up with this unique guitar tone. Well, he had we had the the famous Greeny burst, and the neck pickup was busted, and he had to get it rewound. But at the time, they could only get a different type of wire, which is called heavy form var, which is typically what you find on Strat pickups. So the uh, the neck pickup was rewound with that. Now there's there's an argument as to whether the pickup the magnet in the pickup got flipped then or whether it happens in the factory, because there are stories of, you know, the bursts coming out with out of phase sounds from straight from stock. So that's, I, I'm not too sure. But um, what that out of phase thing does is give you this really nice kind of fluty sound. The true out of phase would be that both pickups would be exactly the same, seeing the same thing from the string. So it'd be literally, if, to get it properly, it'd be underneath each other, and then you wouldn't get anything. But obviously on the Les Paul, they're slightly further apart, so you get a little bit more treble, that stuff coming through, but usually it sounds really thin. Mm -hmm. The magic with the Greeny guitar was that it didn't, it still had body. And I think the reason that is, is because it was rewound, and it's because the pickups are so different that they're not seeing the the signal they're putting out isn't the same. Right. So whether you get this, you get this like air of out of phaseness, but that's about it. It's a phasing. I think is a is terminology that we use a lot in guitar world. Yeah. L largely, not completely incorrectly, but slightly. So tr true out of phase. If you if you have a sine wave where the, the, the wave is going above the line and then below the line, and you've completely flipped that the other way around. Yeah, yeah. 
So what you'd have to have are, are sort of a piece of music in mono running through two speakers next to each other, one where the speaker's moving forwards and backwards and the other one where it's doing, doing it completely opposite. opposite. And that's the sort of the dictionary definition of true yeah. kind of out of phase. And when we talk about positions two and four on, on strats yeah. and things like that, and everyone goes, oh, it's the out of phase sound. Mm -hmm. Just again, for, for these guys here, explain why it's, it's kind of not really out of phase. <laughs> well, it's, it kind of is and it isn't. So, I mean, positions two and four, they're wound, in, on, on a strat, they're reverse wound, reverse polarity. Let's try saying that after a few. So, but what that's doing is it's literally, it is flipping the phase. So technically, from that point of view, it is out of phase, but you also have the magnetic polarity flips. So what that does is if you flip the, the winds direction, your signal will go from this to the reverse. Yeah. And then, so you've got it out of phase and then you flip the mag magnetic phase and that flips your signal back into phase, but all of the junk that's coming off your computer screen, all that kind of stuff stays out. So you cancel out the hum. That's what that does. There's also, I remember our guitar technician explaining as well, because the pickups are spread apart, mm -hmm. the, the point of oscillation of the string is different above each pickup. Exactly. So it can never be truly phase cancelling yeah. because, hey, there's your science lesson <laughs> for today. Aren't you pleased? Uh, OK, so um, let's plug in, if I might. Could I borrow the cable? Yes. OK, so I have uh, now um, a stock uh, 50s Les Paul standard that I've just pulled off the shelf in Anderton's. Same guitar as that one, but mm -hmm. with the stock pickups in it. So just explain again, what's the, 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 the differences just technically both between how, what the pickups actually are in this and also the way in which it's wired in its middle position being different to that one. OK, so the middle position, the main difference. So both of those are they're wound the same way and the magnetic um, polarity is the same way around. So they're running in parallel. So the signal coming out of them is the same. Um, the fundamental difference, well, not fundamental, another difference is that both those pickups are wax potted mm -hmm. and the coils are identical, which what that does is it gives you maximum hum cancelling quality, but you, it's like putting a blanket over the top of your tone. So you, you kind of open up a load of sort of that airiness. That's the potting does that, yeah? The, Mm, or that's... That potting does slight, the pot, what the potting does is it takes, you get less harmonics around the note, a more fundamental note. So it's, it's really good for if you want to play, play, you know, like punk stuff and mm -hmm. that kind of, when you want a bit more punch, leaving it unpotted, you get all these extra harmonics. It's, it's just, it's the pickups seeing, the pickup itself is moving, bits are moving around. So you get, if it's too much, you get microphonic squealing, but if you just get it right, you can, you just, it just opens up your tone. It's like, it sounds so much bigger than it actually is. Do you think, okay, I'm going to slightly off topic here. How much of this science do you think guys like Seth Lover and Leo Fender and the sort of pioneers of, of, of early, how much do you think they really understood at a sort of a physics level versus just kept doing different things and just worked out different stuff? Because it feels like today we understand the physics of it yeah. in great detail, but not necessarily like, you know, it's, it's not about the physics anymore. It's about capturing the magic somehow. Yeah. So, and I'm sort of, it, it, it interests me about what, you know, what if you've read anything about, you know, how Seth Lover would have, you know, what, what did he know? <laughs> That's right. He had obviously a, you know, a grasp of what was going on. He must have had to invent it. How, how much he knew, I don't, to be honest, I don't know. But the thing is, is when, when somebody builds the first thing, you've or anybody who comes after you, you've got that to reference against. Mm. So you can change or in, you know, lots of pickup makers case, look right back at it and just like, how did he do that? Yeah. You know? All um, right, well, look, let's, again, I, uh, I won't attempt to, to be uh, Peter Green, uh, but I will play and then I'll play that one. So and in fact, I'll do a quick run through. So neck pickup. You know what? Let's lose the Marks and Spencer's Revo. Okay. <laughs> so 
three quick tones, got clean amplifier, and I'm not sort of picking terribly hard or anything like that. Massively different sound. Quieter, more, what's that? Like a softer, no, a softer yeah. tone, isn't it? More, it's more, it's more woody, I yeah. find. But that's, I, th I think that's because the heavy form vial, which it's wound with, even though on paper, the wire itself is thinner than the plain enamel, which most paths are, it actually makes a fatter coil, which that plays its own part. It may give you, you've got more, more of the, it's more of the coil further away from the magnetic yeah. fields, which changes the tone dramatically. I'm going to go straight to the bridge first, and then because we'll end on the, the middle, which I guess is where the, the classic, you know. Even there, I sense I can hear a little bit of that quacky, mm -hmm. I guess that classic Peter Greeny kind of sound. So it isn't, I, you know, I, I was always under the impression that the, the, the myth and the story was simply a flipped no. neck pickup. So it's, it's more, way it's, more than that. I mean, I was lucky enough to see the Greeny guitar when a, a guy I know was had it in the UK before it was sold to Kirk Hammett. So I got to take, well, he kindly let me take some parts apart to get readings and things. I couldn't take the pickups apart, annoyingly. He wouldn't let me, but Well, yeah. let's, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that because yeah. I think that's kind of so. <laughs> It's really, there was, some, I mean, I guess, you know, I could just turn the amp down if I wanted to on mm. that guitar, but there's something a little bit like very ballsy about that guitar that kind of on a clean tone makes me want to sort of go, oh, just calm it down a little bit here. I imagine on a driven tone, it'll, mm. you know, if you're looking for like a slash sound, for yeah, example, yeah. that would probably be cool. Uh, this, I don't have that fear of digging in a bit because it sort of feels a little softer to play. <laughs> Okay, so this is the tone that ever, I mean, and again, we've got no pedals on here. I might just put a little bit of drive. It's a lovely sounding neck pickup. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we have certainly demonstrated in this first little clip quite how different they sound than the pickups mm -hmm. would be on a stock one. We're going to whiz through some other Les Pauls in a minute, but come on then, tell us why are you qualified to, uh, you know, put a set out of pickups that are, you know, that are, that are uh, named the Bethnal Green set and, and, and uh, what did you experience? What did you go through to, to sort of be able to capture these so accurately? Well, I was lucky enough, uh, a guy I know, who's a sort of vintage dealer, um, had the Greeny guitar in the UK uh, for a bit before it went back to America and was eventually sold to Kurt Hammett. And I was over at his place for another reason and he was just, he sort of was just like, oh, Matt, come have a look at this. So and then pulled out the greeny guitar and um yeah i got to i got to play it a little bit i got to see in, see inside see the guts i wasn't able to take the pickups out and you know which i did try and convince him but he said no but i've t taken readings and also got you know the first hand experience on what they actually sound like yeah um which is really you know, it's really cool and they can they're very different to the stock paths that we make um because they're that the bridge pickup is actually, it's a lot more powerful. So a lot more mids in there. And the neck pickup obviously has all the weird stuff that went on with it. Uh, and it's a completely different beast. 
I can, I can understand people's reluctance to let you take stuff apart. Of course. <laughs> I, I got offered earlier this year, and, I, and, and now I'm going to... I'm trying to remember. I think it was something to do with Kirk Hammett, but it was the guy who owned the Martin D45 that Metallica had used on some unplugged MTV right. thing. And it was like, he was in London. Did I want to meet him to interview him to talk about the guitar? Yeah. So it was like, 100%, that'll be fun. Da, da, da. And then literally in the email chain going back and forwards was basically, but you won't be allowed to touch the guitar. <laughs> At which point I was just like, well, really, that's all anyone's interested yeah, in, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's like, what does it actually sound like? Um, so yeah, we, we, that never happened in the end because it was just like, well, what's the point if we're not allowed to touch the guitar? But I can imagine people, you know, because they're, what's Greeny worth now? A million uh, dollars? Something Maybe like more? That. Yeah. Yeah, you can understand you wouldn't want someone to go, oh, I, I was saying, and then I just dropped something on it and I'm really sorry. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I mean, fortunately, I've been, because you know, I did repairs for such a long time, mm. I have actually, you know, had to fix them. And so I have actually seen inside them, which is always, always pretty cool and sort of brought them back to life. But yeah, I wasn't allowed on that one, unfortunately. Right. Well, uh, did, I, did I tell you as well? I, I, I've said this on YouTube before. My dad went to the same, was in the same class at Peter Green at school with really? Peter Green at school. Yeah, That's and awesome. uh, my dad's first ever band when he was fourteen years old was him on drums and Peter Green on guitar. That's and there is no cool. footage, obviously no video footage, no nothing. It was never, it was never a famous guitar, a uh, <laughs> famous band. It was just a school band. But yeah, and my dad contributed. There's a, I don't know if the book's come out yet, but there was a guy. Uh, in the last 12 months or so, writing a biography of Peter Green that my dad contributed to, like, early life stuff. Yeah, but, that's yeah. really cool. <laughs> um, so there we are. It's always kind of fun when someone's got, like, a, a Peter Green story. Tell me, um, people might notice, I mean, if you've got super bionic vision here, that obviously the pickup's upside down, so that's a, is that a sort of a telltale sign that the... That's just the way his was. I mean, it, sonically, it does nothing to the sound, so you can turn it around the normal way, have it stock and it would still sound exactly the same right fine but you can see what i'm saying that the the slugs basically where you see the screw hole the screw heads for those on a regular les paul you'd have one set at the front and one yeah. set at the back but on this one they're the same way so that's a little giveaway that you can see someone's trying to do a peter green thing <laughs> yeah. um what i'd kind of like you to do and i'm i'm not going to blindfold up for this because i kind of can't play the guitar properly if i can't see what i'm doing but I kind of feel like I just want to go through now mm -hmm. uh, different Les Pauls. So um, it's pretty common for people to buy a guitar like this, which is the Epiphone Les Paul standard, and feel like you can get a fairly big upgrade to the tone if you just change the pickups. Um, Gibson them, or Epiphone themselves, sorry, do like a, a, a 59 version of the Epiphone Les Paul, which has their American pickups in it. And I know we must have sold over the years hundreds and hundreds of sets of like, you know, a, a, a Seymour Duncan 59 yeah. or whatever, you know. So, and, and it's a, but let's just see. No pedals and then a little bit of drive as well uh, after this first bit. Sounds like a less ballsy version of the normal Gibson mm -hmm. one. A um, little bit of gain. Let's try, it's let's just go in order. Um, in fact, let's try the, the actual Gibson, no, the, where do I, I want that's, the, that's, that, that's your one. Yes, yeah, that's my one, try that one. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, this is the, the full fat Gibson one that essentially that Epiphone is trying to be. That's the 50s Epiphone, by the way. Clear. Yeah, it's hard to 
so weird because half of me just sits here going, when your brain knows that something's 500 pounds versus two and a half thousand mm. quid or whatever the price difference is, you're sort of predisposed to be going, right, I'm looking, I'm, hit, I'm listening for... An improvement. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the, and then I think there's a certain element of psychosomatic that comes in yeah. that goes, is it really there? What I hear generally between cheap guitars and expensive guitars is a sense of dynamic where the cheap guitar kind of wants to give you this much dynamic and the expensive guitar just wants to yeah. give you a bit more dynamic. Whether that ends up becoming audible across YouTube, it's hard to tell. But I think when I've spoken to other guitar players, I know Pete is the same. There is this general consensus of yes, we all seem to agree that that's yeah. there. Whether something sounds better or worse is completely subjective. So it's, <laughs> it's um, but I get it. So a little bit of gain on this now. Um, makes me want to play it more yeah which is like <laughs> crazy weird right so there we go i mean it's you can sit in the ballpark uh let's go to my own personal uh 58 custom shop um with what gibson just described as custom buckers in it mm -hmm. this is sort of gibson's almost like get out of jail free card to basically design a pickup however they want it to sound and just call it a custom bucket because it's kind of, it's basically just gives Gibson license to go, well, it's whatever we it felt it was appropriate to sound like. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's like, um, but I get it, I get it. Uh, so here we go, clean again. in the bridge pickup definitely I, I'm gonna use one of those awful guitarist terms now <laughs> sounds more woody yep. to me whatever that means This guitar, my claim to fame with this guitar is that Robin Ford told me that the neck pickup in this guitar sounded better than the one on his Les Paul. Just saying. Let's get the goat out. He hasn't played mine yet, did he? This is true, he never played yours. This, if you're not familiar with it, is Pete's Les Paul that, if I'm honest with you, I'm slightly jealous of and I kind of feel is to Les Paul's what his purple telly is to, to Telecast. It's just a very, very good one. softer sounding, I think, mm. than the... Uh... It's a very well balanced. I sometimes find if I've got one criticism of my Les Paul, and maybe several Les Pauls, is that the, the volume difference between the front and the back pickup is, is uh, too much, you know? Yeah. So you get like one pickup that you always gravitate towards because you just like it more. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think on... And in the middle. Uh... Now this isn't wired weird, and yet that's the one, that's got some sort of quacky. Both the pickups individually have got that clarity that you get with 
you know, a decent set of humbuckers, you know, the old PATH thing, which is basically a sort of telly on steroids. Yeah. I kind of want to, I didn't do the, the gain with mine, did I, but. <laughs> uh, it's a good guitar, this one. It really is a good guitar. Um, okay, so if I remember rightly, if you want a guitar like Pete's, you are uh, touching five figures, I think, almost. Can I? So now can I have uh, the, yes, your the one, room. which I haven't, this is, the, this is the one we, let's have a little listen. What do we think it sounds most like? So there's the sound that you can't get. I, I, I will ask right at the very end. In fact, no, let's ask now. You obviously explained in quite detail that the two pickups are fundamentally different on yeah, the yeah. greenie, and that's. But if I just want to get in the ballpark, is it as simple as just taking the neck pickup out and flipping it? Because I know some, you know, I've seen some where there's like mods where you can just have a tone pot that pulls out and yeah, it just yeah, flips yeah. the phase so on it. A... Depend, it depends what you, how your pickup's wired, but if you've got a uh, four conductor wire, which is typically that black wire mm -hmm. with then, you know, red, green and whatever coming out of it, you can just flip it really easily, but that's the sort of electronic phase. Yeah. This one's flipped magnetically, which some people argue it does sound a bit different, but mm -hmm. it, again, it's simple to do. You just take the cover off if you've got one, take the magnet out, flip it over, stuff it back in, and bosh. And bosh on your 5,000 pound Les Paul. Maybe yeah. get a technician to do that for you, but. <laughs> You can also flip it back into phase by rolling one of the volumes back slightly. Okay. That's a real on-offy kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, isn't it? Again, that's because you're changing, you're dramatically changing what the pickups are doing. So then they're flipping more back into phase because they're giving you different signals. This is where I, you know, my. C and GCSE physics probably isn't, you know, keeping up here. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's weird. So yeah, either of the volume controls, just going from 10 to 9 yeah. is... Uh... It's very, let me just go back to, because my, my kind of gut feeling is that the custom buckers that are coming in the in the two custom shop list mm -hmm. balls we've got here are more reminiscent of this just because I kind of feel they're just less ballsy. They've yeah. got that more uh, creamier kind of subtle Les Paul tone that you perhaps associate with a, an old school Les Paul rather than perhaps yeah. some of the more modern ones where they're trying to give you a bit more of a, a gainy kind of tone out the box. but. <laughs> I 
it's super inspiring to play. So I'm just going to go back to final, final. Back to here. Well, I, like I said at the beginning, I don't think there's a better or worse necessarily. There's definitely a vibe of an era mm -hmm. uh, and a player, obviously, yeah. around those, which I suppose is, is all you can kind of hope exactly. to achieve, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I kind of feel if, if, if that, you know, obviously Peter Green and early Fleetwood Mac kind of... Um, yeah, those quite clean very atmospheric, um, that real sense that the player is really kind of getting all the range yeah, out really of the guitar. Yeah, really touch sensitive dynamic. Yeah. Is that kind of, that's the vibe I always got from yes. the tone. So. I, think it, I think if that's what you want, 100%, I can see why you'd want to put a set of those in your Les Paul. I yeah. kind of think if you just want to play balls to the wall rock There's guitar, to... you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't go down yeah. that, um, that route. But I mean, congratulations, man. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's it. And how many years have they been in the in the sort of making? It was about four. I can't remember when. Whenever it was, whenever the green guitar was over here, which I can't remember now. It was years, years and then and sort years. of tinkering and tinkering, and then you know, fi finally get finding all the bits, getting everything right, because these cosmetically are identical as well. So they've got <laughs> the markings and the right oh, screws, wow. the right covers. So it's, they're, a lot, they're very different to our standard paths. Right. But they're as, as close as I can get to. And when, when you buy a, a set, do you, does it come with, um, you know, have you changed the, the, the pots and the wiring as well and stuff on, to be kind of On correct? this one, it's, it's changed so everything is as close as I can get it. So I've right. ripped out this, it had one of those, the metal plates under here. So I've taken that out because it just had the short shaft. I mean, this is utterly geeky, but the short shaft 500K pots, they're in there. But what, what do you get when you buy the set from Monty's? It's, it's just the set. We do a standalone loom, which can, right. you know, match up with it. So maybe what we'll do in the description below or, uh, is we'll put, so you buy the, the, buy the pickups, which you can just put in with your regular electronics yep, if you want to, or you can replace the electronics with something that gives you that extra. Yeah, extra, extra 10%. 1%, 10%, 1%. big plane, look at that. <laughs> Many percents, uh, <laughs> all the percents. <laughs> all the percents. So look, thanks ever so much for coming in, man. It's been an absolute um, pleasure. These are hand wired in the UK, incredibly small quantities. Um, you know, we're talking, you know, dozens a month, not hundreds and hundreds a month. So um, be prepared to wait for a little bit if you want a set. Uh, but I think right now today they're in stock at Anderton's and in stock at Monty's. Um, Anderton's ships all over the world. So if you're watching this from Australia or America or wherever, don't worry, we can sort you out. Uh, but yes, there you go. And I, I did we even tell, I don't think we told the price. I think we've kind of, we've left that till yeah. the end. So uh, come on, so tell they're, me. They're uh, 450 a set. 450 a set, excluding mm -hmm. the loom. Excluding the loom. Including VAT though. Including VAT, yes. So that comes off if you don't live in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and how much is the loom? The loom is... Roughly. Seven, rough, 70 quid. Yeah, about 70. Okay. Yeah, 70 it's about quid. 70 quid. So about 500 quid for the mm -hmm. whole... Whole shebang. Shebang. Wow. And then, well, look, man, it's very cool. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, you know, Peter Green, what an absolute legend. He's a genius. Uh, I mean, again, if nothing else from this video, if you're sitting there going, yeah, I can't really, you know, maybe I've heard Albatross or something yeah. like that, you know, but that's it. Go and go and dive through that old. Yeah, you won't be disappoint yeah, disappointed. It's just, it's, it's <laughs> another level and, and, and probably doesn't get played on, you know, doesn't get played on like national radio, you know, enough. No. So thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, we shall see you, I'm sure, in another video soon. Au revoir. Where's all the volume gone? That's 
Wait. Slightly weird. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Let's do that whole clip again. <laughs> <laughs> we use that as an outtake. <laughs> okay. I remember the first time. Yeah. <laughs> mm.